Hi, this is Matt McIntosh from the Sci-Fi FX Podcast. I was at Wizard World this weekend, as you all know, and I was lucky enough to run into the very nice Ernest Klein of Ready Player One and Fanboys. And man, was he was a nice guy. He took some time to talk with us and tell us a little bit about some other projects he's got going on and if there will be a part two to Ready Player One. If you haven't read it already, I highly suggest that you do. And here's the interview with him. Hi, this is Matt here with the Sci-Fi FX Podcast. And uh, as you can see, I have Ernie from Ready Player One. Ran into him here at the convention here in Austin. Say hello. Hey, guys. So tell me a little bit about Tell me a little bit about the book. I mean, those for those people who haven't read it yet, what 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 are they what are they looking forward to? Because obviously, anyone who's seeing this knows that it's my favorite book. My reviews on the website. Uh, your, your your author is just you did absolutely fabulous with it. Not only with that, but fan days also. Right Our on. fanboys. I'm sorry. Right on. Thanks, man. Um, well, yeah, it's called Ready Player One, and it's a science fiction novel set about 30, 35 years in the future. And it's about an eccentric uh, video game designer, uh, multi-billionaire, who dies in the opening pages of the book. And he leaves his fortune and control of his company to whoever can solve these video game uh, puzzles and riddles that he's left behind. Um, he's the creator of a virtual world that's kind of replaced the internet, and it's called the Oasis. And it's like World of Warcraft meets Second Life meets all of the internet kind of mashed together into a sprawling virtual world. And within this virtual world, uh, he's hidden three... Uh, um, three Easter eggs, and the first person to kind of find and unlock uh, these three puzzles um, uh, will win his fortune and control of the virtual world. And the uh, all the puzzles and riddles and clues have to do with the stuff that he's obsessed with, which uh, are kind of mirror my own obsessions, uh, which made it easier to write the book. And so all the puzzles and riddles have to do with 1980s pop culture and classic science fiction movies and novels and classic video games, John Hughes movies, kind of everything, Ultraman, giant robots, everything that I've grown up loving is kind of all thrown together and mashed up in, in, uh, in this story. So you have all these kids, the story's about all these kids in the future who are studying kind of ancient pop culture like monks so that they can unlock these clues and riddles. Uh, and they're battling an evil mega corporation like in an old cyberpunk you know, uh, novel, uh, who is also trying to win the prize. So that's the basic premise of Ready Player One. And Warner Brothers, uh, the day after I sold the book to Random House, Warner Brothers bought the movie rights uh, with me attached to write the screenplay. So I wrote the first draft of a, a screenplay adaptation of my novel. And now uh, Warner Brothers is looking for a director. So hopefully in a couple of years, it'll be a movie as well as a novel. But you should read the book first, because the book's always better than the movie. And the book was just awesome. So you do have a movie coming out then. That was going to be my next question, but you actually yeah, gave me the Yeah, it's still early development stages. I wrote the script, and the script they're using to find a director. Uh, but until we have a director, you know, things move very slowly in Hollywood. I tell, I joke that if it takes less time than John Carter of Mars to get made into a movie, um, which I think was about 100 yes. years from the time the book was published, then I will be pleasantly surprised. But even, like, some of my favorite novels, like science fiction classics like Ender's Game, um, they just finished making that new movie, and that came out 30 years ago. So it can take a long time, but also it can go really fast. It just depends on the kind of luck that you have in Hollywood. So I try to remain cautiously optimistic and keep my fingers crossed about the movie. Now, the question that I know me and, and Troy, one of my co-hosts, is going to have, is there going to be a second part to the movie, or to the, to the book? To the story? Yeah, I, initially I just wanted to write a standalone story uh, with, an, with a clear ending because I hate it when you read a big book and then you get to the end and you have to wait a couple years for another book to find out how the story ends. But I, um, but it, well, as I was writing, I did spend a lot of time thinking about what would happen to the characters after that, and, I, and especially on my book tour, and all, a lot of people have asked me that. And I have thought a lot about it, and I had, kind of have outlines for what could be two more books uh, in a series, make it a trilogy. But uh, I'm working on a completely different science fiction novel right now, my second novel that's not related to Ready Player One, and a TV project, and uh, also a movie project. So I have other stuff on my plate right now, but after that, eventually, someday, I'm going to write more in the Ready Player One universe, just because I love the Oasis, because it mashes up all of pop culture and since it's in a virtual world you can have anything happen you can have giant crazy robot battles with Voltron versus Mechagodzilla versus you know uh, everybody um, so yeah I, I will definitely write more uh, more in the Ready Player One universe but I, I don't know when so you have to be patient so you were saying that that came from your your childhood and your fantasy. I mean, is that is that the inspiration for this book? Yeah, I mean, I grew up playing Atari uh, and uh, obsessed with uh, classic video games and would hang out at the arcade and play Dungeons and Dragons. Not just Dungeons and Dragons, but like every RPG uh, you could think of: Marvel, superheroes, champions, GURPS, 
um, Space Master, Star Frontiers. Like I uh, was lucky enough to have like a group of nerds in my little town, and we all just played everything and loved all video games and Commodore 64 games and you know everything nerdy. We could get our hit comic books. All of that uh, was informed my whole childhood. And when I started to write my first novel, they you know they tell you to write what you know, and what I know about is loving all of that stuff. Uh, and uh, and by writing about it and working it into the story as plot points, it was a way for me to celebrate it and maintain my own interest in writing the book while I was writing it. Because writing a novel is hard and you got to write about stuff that you love or it's going to be painful to sit down and get in front of the computer every night and write. So I would just, it made me excited to sit down and write because I could figure out a way to work in more of my favorite stuff into the story. Well, it was awesome. So if there's somebody who wants to see you and get a book signed or something like that, where are you going to be in the future that they can get a hold of you? Um, I know well, we're I just, here in Austin at Wizard World, but obviously you've got yeah, to be somewhere else at some point. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, I think I'm... Uh, uh, you can find me around town uh, all the time at Austin Books and Comics. Um, I, I would just check my website. Like right now, I don't have anything lined up because I just finished up my paperback tour. Uh, so I was signing books all across the country all summer, taking my DeLorean. I drove my DeLorean on my book tour. Uh, and this is the last event that I have planned right now this year, like November, December, I'm kind of taking off to recover. But uh, if you just check my blog, which is ErnieKlein.com or ErnestKlein.com, uh, just like my name is spelled, um, then uh, 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 on my blog, I always keep an, uh, a list of uh, my upcoming appearances. All right. Well, well, we'll make sure that all those links get put into the to the video for everyone. Awesome. And I'm going to show them the uh, DeLorean, obviously. It's a big hit with kids and of all ages. I really do appreciate your time and, and everything you did in the book and, and all your stories. They're wonderful. We look forward to the next one. Right on. Thanks, man. I nice appreciate meeting it. you. Thank cool. you. Awesome. You look pretty cool, man. I won't lie to you. Let me get the let me get the hoverboard. The hoverboard looks great because of the clear stand that I have for it. It looks like it's actually hovering. Awesome. Right on, dude. Now I'm going to film you getting out. It's hard to get out of a DeLorean. Give it a shot. Oh, that's pretty bad. Not, not good. <laughs>